hey, we're going to Mexico. We want to take you with us. But before we go, we got to prep. And we've been doing a lot of that. Hi, I'm Rhonda. I'm Angie. And we are Adventures in Nomadness. And we're heading to Mexico. We're going to be there for three months. We're going to be traveling with a caravan of uh, 12 rigs total. So in order to go for that length of time, we have quite a bit of prep to do. We want to share with you what that entailed. And hopefully if you decide to go to Mexico, this will help you out. Now the first things first is all the documents that you have to have. Number one. Number one, <laughs> don't leave home without these, your passports. Yeah. And, and uh, sorry, uh, make sure that your passports are valid for at least six months uh, after you return. So that holds true for a lot of, co uh, a lot of countries. Uh, along with the passports, your COVID vaccination cards. You won't need this to get across the border, but there are some venues that you may need them in. All right, the other things you're gonna need is your vehicle registration or your title. No, I've seen and and I've seen or. We're gonna take both. So have your registration uh, and title handy in case they ask you for both. Uh, third thing you're gonna need, if you have your vehicle financed, if you have a lien holder through a bank or whatever you have, you're gonna need a permission letter from them. Basically saying, it's okay for Angie and Rhonda to take their Ford F-150 down into Mexico. So we have that letter, it's notarized, and then that'll be the other thing we have to take with us. Okay, what else do we need? We need Mexican auto insurance. So huge requirement. It's not cheap, but it is the law in Mexico to have Mexican auto insurance. There are some companies that may uh, cover liability, but you're still gonna have to have uh, Mexican auto insurance um, with that or on top of that. So that's where we just went through Lewis and Lewis and we've got a, a policy for like six months in case we decide to stay in Mexico longer or whatever, it was like $20 more to go from three, three months to six months. So, you know, whatever. Uh, the other thing that I highly suggest you have as a former travel agent is uh, trip cancellation insurance. And for this type of trip, it was a little bit expensive because we're going through a company in a caravan. And so we're covered for that. But if you uh, even just go on your own, I highly recommend having some sort of trip cancellation or a uh, travel insurance. Uh, the biggest reason is the health insurance part of that. A lot of people's health insurance won't cover them in foreign countries, so definitely check yours. Uh, the other thing, if you have to get repatriated back to the United States by airplane, that can be hugely, hugely costly. So you want to make sure you have that uh, medevac service, uh, and that's the primary reason, in my opinion, to get uh, trip insurance, to make sure you have that health coverage. So even if you self-insure for a huge part of your trip, at least uh, you know, ensure for so much that you can get that health insurance. Copies of the documents. Yeah, so we're gonna have copies of everything. So you have your originals. We're gonna have all of our originals in one envelope and the company we're going through, uh, Caravans of Mexico recommends having two copies. So we're gonna put those in separate envelopes. We'll mark one envelope original and the other two uh, envelopes copies and then we'll have those with us uh, in different places just in case. So definitely make extra copies of your uh, passport and put those maybe in different spots. That could be hugely helpful. And everything else. There's more. Because I knew I'd forget something. Uh, make sure you have your driver's license and a credit card. You will need your credit card for a deposit basically when you enter the country and you'll get that back. That could be anywhere from $400 to $600. And paper list of all of your contacts so if you lose your phone or it goes bad on you you still have those emergency phone numbers if you're like me you don't have them all up here anymore because you just push buttons on your phone she can't even remember my phone number <laughs> Hey, don't forget about your baby. <laughs> and your hat. Because it's hot out here. <laughs> God, <it is. laughs> All right, we're going to continue on with documents. And of course, the most important part of documents is for your pets. So they dropped, Mexico dropped a requirement 
for having a health certificate a couple of years ago, but you still need their rabies certificate and uh, a good flea and tick medicine for them, as well as heartworm medication, <laughs> which we have them on. Oh, Mr. Whiny Pants wants to go to Mexico. We're leaving in three days. All right, you don't have to take all your dog food with them, uh, with you. You can easily buy that in the grocery stores and the vet's offices while you're there. And the thing to uh, sort of keep in mind when you're there is a lot of stray dogs and stray dog packs. So watch your pets with that and bring some waste bags because they're hard to find in Mexico. So I know you're excited. You want to go to Mexico, but you've got to stop yourself and do a few things first. Like have me take it to Jiffy Lube for an oil change. <laughs> Yeah, so have your vehicle inspected and whatever RV. So make sure they're in tip top condition. Uh, most of the roads are in really, really good shape there, especially the toll roads. Uh, but you know, you just don't want to have a mechanical breakdown, obviously, when you're going on a big trip like this. So we've gotten the oil change in our truck. Uh, we had it really looked over when we were in Washington and we had the whole transmission issue. So fingers, uh, fingers crossed that that doesn't come up again. And let's see what else. You know, we want to have some spare parts on hand. We have a spare oil filter. We have a spare air filter. We've got some oil. If you've got a vehicle with a belt, bring an extra belt. And any extra parts you think you might need for your vehicle. If you have diesel, make sure you bring some exhaust fluid because that is kind of hard to find in Mexico. So for your RV, spare parts might include a spare water pump, which we have. Uh, Sail switch for our heater, although it should be most of the time we shouldn't need it, but you should be prepared. We also have some fans because although we have AC and we can run now on our generator, if it all goes sour, at least we'll have some rechargeable fans. Yeah, we also have a circuit board for our furnace. We will be at higher elevations a couple of times, so it may be cool at night. Uh, we also have uh, some wheel bearings, and I have greased the wheel bearings. I've checked the lug nuts and checked the uh, tire pressure. And uh, yeah, the RV's in pretty good shape. It's an awesome shape, actually. And <laughs> we've done some last minute odds and ends of things while we've been dry docked at your parents' house. One more thing, make sure that your tanks are filled. And by that, I mean propane, gas, and maybe a little water, depending on what border you're crossing and where you're planning on staying. Yeah, we're gonna go with a full fresh tank just because water's not potable and we'll talk to that about that in a minute. But you also want uh, probably two spare tires for your RV, which we have. So they recommend you have one tire off the rim. It's easy to get that put on a rim when you have. So we have one spare on a rim, one without. And uh, yeah, we've had that for a while. So we're in pretty good shape there. We have one extra spare for the truck. Plus we have a tire plug patch kit that we'll have because you know we like to go up to crazy places in Alaska on off roads. Well, we talked about documents. There's another kind of paper you don't want to cross the border without and that is the narrow, pesos. the almighty pesos. And why do you need them? Well, you might hit toll booths right away and if you don't have those pesos, you're gonna be sorry. So get yourself at least 2,000 pesos or what equates to about $100 to travel with. And you know, for us, we're thinking this long a trip, why not take a little more than that? Yeah, so that's pretty good that you knew exactly how many pesos $100 was. So here's a quick, easy way to figure out that conversion. So let's take 2,000 for example, have that, 1,000, and then carry a point over. So then that turns into 100. So roughly $100 is 2,000 pesos, all right, because that's kind of handy when you're paying for gas or paying for everything and you got to kind of think on your feet kind of fast. All right, what else do you need? Well, as you probably already know, uh, water's not potable in Mexico, so you don't want to drink the water. So bring one of these five gallon water jug of any kind will work. They've got like the five gallon carboys that you can get and easily exchange, or you can have this filled or you can fill those into this, whatever you want to do. So uh, bring a five gallon jug and this uh, water is super cheap to buy in Mexico. What else? Oh, oops, I was dropping stuff. Uh, bring some bleach because when you do put the non-potable water into your water tank, uh, you can put about a cap full in, not very much at all and that will sanitize your tank just enough for you to do showers and wash your dishes with, but not to drink. 
We also have a Berkey, so we may have an advantage and be able to drink the water after going through the Berkey. We're probably gonna give it a try and we'll be the guinea pigs for you to see, tell you if we get sick or not. Hey. But we're still gonna have our jug of water. We've had some pretty nasty water out there that we've put through the Berkey and it hasn't failed me yet. Speaking of failure, don't fail to bring mosquito repellent and sunscreen. Yep, I just keep Rhonda around because she's the magnet for the mosquitoes, but you still wanna have mosquito repellent and suntan lotion because they're kind of expensive down there and you wanna have it on hand when you need to have it on hand. Some sort of tank sanitizer, Happy Camper, others. We like Happy Camper because it's organic and uh, odor free and all that. So this is pretty much what we use in our tanks. Give me that. Yeah, I don't want water filters. It's not going to make your water in your tank, going into your tank potable, but it will help get some of the crap that is in the water before it gets to your tank. You mean so, that's not a bottle of water? If you don't know what a bottle of water is by now, <laughs> we're in trouble. <laughs> okay, you can bring prescription meds, but make sure they're in the bottle that they came in. Kind of important there. What can't we bring? What can't you bring? You can't bring a gun, ammunition, or illegal drugs. And that includes marijuana, even if it might be legal in the States or even in Mexico. You can't take it across the border, just like in Canada. And you can't take bear spray, nor, well, I shouldn't say nor, small cans of pepper spray that you use in your, to protect yourself from, I don't know, you? people. Yeah. You can take them across the border as best as we can tell, but if you actually carry and use one while in Mexico, it depends on where you are and the circumstances to whether or not that's considered illegal and you could end up in the slammer. So, if you have them, probably okay, but you may not want to take them with you when you're out and about. Honey, it's time to film. Okay, be right there. Hurry up. All right, oh, ready, sheesh. All right, communications is another thing you're gonna need. Because we're going with a group, there's a couple of uh, communication devices we had to purchase. One was a Midland uh, 275, an MXT. It's not quite a CB, but kind of close. The other one was these handheld walkie-talkies. So the CB-like things are gonna be great for on the road. Sure, when we're all, road yeah, yeah, when we're all spread out. Uh, the walkie-talkies are great when we're getting into campsites and they're trying to direct us into where they want us to go. And if we're at an excursion like Janitza and they're like, hey, where's Angie and Rhonda? They give us a call on these. Now, cell phones, our Verizon service should work pretty good while we're there. It did call Verizon. Uh, but if you have a cell phone service and you want better service in Mexico, I would probably think about Telcel. They've got the most extensive network there. Um, you can also get a, it's a little tricky sometimes, get a SIM card and unlock your phone. We're not going to do that with our iPhones, but uh, we tried it with a, an Android Samsung phone that uh, her, your, one of your parents had left over and we couldn't get it to unlock without being a major big deal. So uh, Verizon will work, but we'll see how well. We'll have some times of no cell service. Wow, someone else can hear us on here. Weird. <laughs> Okay, speaking of communication, what about your friends and family? Well, our plan is to send a few of our friends and family our itinerary and stay in touch with them so they know exactly where we're going to be and we're going to be touching base with them to let them know that we're still okay. All right, the, the last thing to bring is the right attitude. You're going to a foreign country and therefore things will not be the same and that's why we travel. We don't want things to be the same as here, but you have to have the right expectation. Things uh, in our reparks are gonna be wildly different than the standards in the United States RV parks. So keep that in mind, the electrical is gonna be different, it's not gonna be near to the standards, and that's okay. It's different, it's all part of the experience. There's gonna be a language barrier, uh, things aren't gonna go right, things are gonna go excellent, it just depends, and that's all part of the experience that we're really looking forward to. Speaking of language, that's probably one of our challenges since neither one of us is fluent in Spanish. However, we'll start to learn and refresh these little gray cells 
from many years ago <laughs> and hopefully we'll pick it up over the next three months. Yeah, because this was a last minute trip, we didn't bone up on Spanish no. at all. We didn't have time to, unfortunately. Had we planned this trip well in advance, we would have definitely taken more Spanish. Duolingo I've been using is excellent. All right, thanks for following along in our prep. We've been doing a lot of it, a lot of research and Viva la Mexico.